In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the best celestial objects to observe with the Celestron Powerseeker 127EQ. So if you are considering buying this telescope, or perhaps you've even just got it and are wondering what's in store for you, or maybe you are just intrigued, then this video is for you. Now I do want to begin, before I delve into those celestial objects, by just explaining what this telescope was designed for and what it is actually capable of. Firstly, it is considered an entry level telescope first and foremost. So it is typically best for those who are new to astronomy, who are yet to have bought a telescope and those who are on a budget. It is a five inch aperture Newtonian reflector telescope that is operated via a German equatorial mount and that is this area here. You will need to perform polar alignment and it does require manual tracking and fine tuning to identify and observe celestial objects. Now it has a highest useful magnification of 300 times which is made possible by the included Barlow lens. You also get two eyepieces, so this is the 10mm eyepiece and I've already got the 20mm erecting eyepiece in there. So you get both of those included and they, both of these will allow you to observe slightly differently. So um, you get, you know, you can use one for a wider field of view and one for more magnified images. So the 20mm gives you the wider field of view, which is why I've got it in there. It's best to start with and then move on to the 10mm when you are ready. Now here's what's most important to remember. This telescope is designed primarily for observing the planets and the moon. This is where this telescope's strength truly lies. So many deep sky objects will be difficult to see due to the limitations of the tripod and mount system. Those that you will be able to see are the brightest. So I just wanted to quickly mention that, and it's important that we set our expectations up front. But with that in mind, let's now delve into the best objects to observe. At number one, we have the moon. Now you can get some really good detailed views of craters and the lunar landscape. Observing the moon at different phases allows you to witness the play of light and shadow, highlighting the rugged landscape. At number two, we have Jupiter and its moons. Now the solar system's largest planet is a fantastic sight with this telescope. You can see the atmospheric bands and with a bit of patience, you should be able to observe the great red spot. The four Galilean moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto will da uh, dance around the planet and change positions. And you can even see that on a single night if you are lucky enough. You can also observe number three, is Venus and its various phases. That's one of my favorites to observe. At number four, we have Saturn and its largest moon, Titan. Now, Titan can be spotted as a distinct point of light. At number five, we have Bright Nebula. So a couple that I recommend you try and see are the Orion Nebula, the Lagoon Nebula in Sagaritis, and the Ring Nebula in Lyra, show, in Lyra. Now these all showcase the birth and death of stars. These gaseous clouds glow in different colors and shapes, offering a peek into the complexities of stellar ev evolution. So it's really, really interesting. You can also, at number six, I can't quite get my hand there because of the, uh, I'm holding my phone in one hand. At number six, beautiful double clusters. So you can explore Denobula in Leo and Alberio in Cygnus for a colourful celestial spectacle. At number seven, we have brighter clusters. So you don't want to miss the Perseus double cluster, the Pleiades and the Hercules globular cluster. They offer a glimpse into the galaxy's structure and the life cycle of stars. So I would really recommend that you try and observe those. And at number eight, we have star clouds of Sagaritis and Scorpio. They are fantastic views and they are highly rewarding to observe. So, I do also want to give you some tips when using this telescope. So this should help you uh, get the best views from it. Firstly, it's really important that you stabilize the mount. 
So the 127 EQ's mount may feel a little bit wobbly at first, and it's where that this where this telescope typically gets um, a little bit of criticism. So to improve stability, you can place a weight such as a small sandbag on the accessory tray. That typically works really, really well to reduce vibrations and make the telescope more stable. When it comes to making fine adjustments, you will need to, as I say, make precise adjustments and that can be challenging, especially at first. So you should practice making these adjustments and you need to be very gentle when you do so. I do find that it gets easier with time, but there is a learning curve with this telescope. Next, collimation. So like all reflectors, you will need to perform periodic collimation, especially if you move it. So a recommendation is set it up where you intend to use it and kind of keep it there. Try not to dissemble and assemble uh, too frequently. You should learn how to collimate your telescope. Uh, there's lots of good videos on that, um, which is good. Um, but just be very, very careful when you move it. Next onto the eyepieces, I would recommend that you upgrade them. So while these are good starting points, the ones that come included, um, you may find that upgrading them can vastly improve your viewing clarity and magnification. So I'd recommend finding a decent 30 or 32 millimeter eyepiece. I feel that the, the, the 40 millimeter eyepiece is just, yeah, just doesn't work. You need to understand the magnification limits. So for clearer views, stick with lower magnification and consider investing in a, a quality Barlow lens as well. So I would actually consider upgrading that. Um, and also just make sure that you allow some time for your eyes to adjust in the darkness and, and give the telescope some time to uh, acclimate to the outdoor temperature. So before you start observing, take this, take your telescope out and just give it a chance um, to yeah, acclimate. Um, that should improve the sharpness and clarity of your observations. It's worked very, very well for me. And then viewing the moon. So while this is a spectacular target for the PowerSeeker 127EQ, if you do want more detailed lunar exploration, excuse me, a moon filter can reduce brightness and enhance surface de details, making for a more comfortable and detailed ob observation. So they are the best things to see with the 127 EQ. I suggest checking those out first and foremost. You can always use Sky Maps or you can use the provided Celestron software that you get included with this that will help you to identify and give you ideas as to what to view. It's a great beginner's telescope. It's very, very versatile. Um, so yeah, best of luck and over to you.